comfortable? And what is really important? What is the real lesson in life that we have to learn? The greatest education that we can receive is what? I've said it before. Do you remember what is the, the highest education that one can get? Does someone remember what the Spirit of God said? The highest education that one can gain, the greatest achievement in education that one can attain is to know God's will for your life. There's nothing intellectually more important than this specific achievement. Lord, please save me. I didn't know how, but I watched how he changed the circumstances, not according to my will, but the way he did it. Upon surrender, we get a new power and a new heart. Upon surrender, tonight, if we surrender, this is what we get by faith. So I went back in two weeks, the judge said, okay, you in school? I said, yeah, I'm in school. First, this is a little strange. I'm in court, I'm sitting waiting for them to call my name. The judge says, come here. And I said, me, he said, come here. And I walked up to bailiff, I walked, he said, have you had breakfast? I don't, his name is Judge Franciscus. I don't know, the, didn't, never saw this man. He said, have you had breakfast? I said, uh, no. Told the clerk, tell him, call the cafeteria. He said, go have breakfast and come back. I went upstairs to the cafeteria, ate, put it on the judge's bill. Now I'm talking about when God does something, now, I've been praying. You, I mean, I would, get through, I would get through doing some riotous, crazy stuff. And when I would leave, everybody would be like, man, Stevie is crazy. <laughs> but I'd be at home on my knees at night saying, Lord, please help me. I'm not happy. Please. I would be begging him, Lord, please change my life. Please. I would just be begging God. So I eat breakfast. Boom, come back. The judge says, okay. I want you to come back in five weeks, show me some grades. Five weeks later, showed him some grades, said, show me in five more weeks. He kept putting it out. Then I came, I said, I'm finished. He said, you're going to college? What am I say? You better believe it. <laughs> yes. I said, yes. He said, okay, what college? I said, Pasadena City College. He said, okay, then we can start your trial because that's right here. And I said, well, actually, I'm trying to go out of town. He said, what, what? He said, what school? I only knew one. I said, Oakwood. He said, Oakwood. I said, yes, in Alabama. He said, okay, come back in, uh, uh, like, gave me about six weeks to show me that you've applied and you've been accepted. I had to fill out an application for Oakwood. <laughs> applied, was accepted. Amen. Went back, went, went back, showed him I'm accepted. He said, okay, I want you to come back in December. Show me your first quarter's grades in college. In the meantime, I'm trying to get away from the hood because I, I associate hood with high. Hood with hood stuff. Hood with hood-ish. Every time I wasn't in the hood, I was cool. But once I got in, man, I started getting high and tripping. So the Lord gave me a job as a tip master. I'm leaving a whole lot out of it, all right? And I get, I get a tip master's where you watch the tent for a crusade. And it was on the, on the corner of Figueroa. I mean, it was on the corner of Florence and Rosecran. I mean, Rosecran and... Central and Rosecrans, that's the heat of Compton's. Back then was back when the Compton Crips was killing everything that wasn't blue. Sherm or PCP was at an all time high. Crack was just coming in real strong on the back. And I was right on that corner having to protect that tent. I didn't care. I was so happy to work for God. I remember going in that tent. I could tell you so many stories about that tent, but as it was coming to an end, I needed to get to Oakwood. I didn't have a ride to Oakwood. I didn't know how am I going to get to Oakwood. I didn't have the money to get to Oakwood. But I had enough money to, 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 to get on the bus, but I didn't want to get on the bus. So I started praying, Lord, do you really want me to go down to Oakwood? Well, the judge is saying, if you don't go, guess what? You're going to jail. And remember, it's comfortable in here. Lord, I'm becoming institutionalized. Please save me. God heard that prayer. 
This brother pulls up to the tent. It's one o'clock in the morning. He is loaded out of his brain. I mean, he's so high, been smoking sherm. And he walks up in the tent, one prayer. I say, brother, you know what you need? I said, what he said? I said, you need to go to Oakwood. He said, what? I said, man, that's, and I started telling him about Oakwood. I said, that's where angels are. And we prayed and he cried, not cried with him. Cause if you, they don't know, do they still sherm still? They know what that is? PCP, they don't, they don't have that out here, huh? That's where if you smoke it, whatever you was thinking about, you did it that night. I don't care what it was. I mean, I had, a, I mean, I have friends would say they had to move and they hit that stick and they live on the second story. They truck me down their park and they think they put it in the back of the truck, throwing all their furniture out the window. I mean, and, and, and you could, I'm just telling you, that's what that sherm would do for you. I'm telling you. But hey, but but the crack is worse because the crack, you just sit around the, staring at each other. I did that, too. I quit smoking crack. I said, Lord, I, I, when I used to hit that crack pot, I say, Lord, look at me. Please, I know I'm killing myself. Help me. Everybody else thought I was having fun. I was begging God for help. Anyway, so I told this brother, he said, yeah, I want to go to Oakwood. I said, man, you need to go. I'll pay for the gas. Let's go. All we need to do is get there. God's angels are there because that's what they told me. I didn't know it was just like anywhere else. <laughs> I didn't know. That I told everybody I'm leaving on Saturday night. I said, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. I told everybody they brought gifts for me. They told me I was a good tent master. Some of the old sisters in the church made me big old, big old food baskets. I mean, some of the, I mean, you talking about back when fried chicken was fried chicken. You know, the shake up kind in the bag. I'm not talking about shake and bake either. I'm talking about shake it, fried it up there. I had it all ready, but there was no Craig Wilhite. I say his name because he's alive and he'll verify the story. I could call him right now. Hey, don't tell me. Look, so all of a sudden, it's like 10 o'clock at night, no Craig. 11, no Craig. 12, I say, Lord, and I hear the horn blowing. Craig pulls up high out of his brain. And he's like, let's go. And he's, I mean, he's gone. He's been smoking that sherm. Once you smoke that sherm, whatever's on your mind, you're going to do. I don't care. Or you're going to think you did it. Hey, I jumped in the truck with Craig. He drove all night long. I think we stopped in the middle of Oklahoma. When <laughs> Next day, his high came down. I drove while he slept. I drove. And while we were, we were, we were so far out, I said, man, what happened? How'd you do it? He said, man, he looked. He said, uh-oh. I said, what's wrong? He said, well, me and my partner, we were sitting down, and we were getting high, and I start crying. And, I, and, and, and my partner said, Craig, why are you crying? He said, man, I need to go to Oakwood where the angels are. <laughs> and his partner said, well, why don't you go, Craig? Why don't you go? And he said, because the tires on my truck are bald, and they won't make it across country. He said, well, man, let's take the tires off my truck and put them on your truck. <laughs> And then told him, this. and then told him, don't worry, go. I'll put the ones back on mine. You just go, man. See the angels. If I could say this with respect, thank God for Sherm. Because that brother got high and he went to Oakwood, got down there with no money. Hey. <laughs> Got strong in the Lord, got in school, doing good today, married to a dentist, just as happy. I said, Lord have mercy. All right, there's a little change in the program right here. We're asking the shepherd to bring back the news of this time.
brethren have looked at him and they have seen that the call is of me. So now Allegheny West Conference has decided that he is going to be set apart for the gospel ministry. He's been doing ministry all the time. Now the church has ratified what you've already done in heaven. Thankful for him for his wife as well. Because without a wife committed to our side, no man can function the way that he should. We're glad for this ministry to be today. How about we give this young man a great number of gifts? Given him ability beyond his years. We pray that you will continue to use them for the call of God. There's nothing greater in all the world than to be a Seventh day Adventist minister who has been set aside for the call. Give to the call. We spend our time for the call. We spend our talents for the call. One day when grace gives way to glory, we know that the call will be worth it. It will be good. Father, elevate him in the eyes of all those that he will come in contact with. May they know first of all, he is your name. Thank you to bless him with the gifts of, of speaking and communicating the divine gospel. And Father, it lets us know we, we, we might not be proficient in Greek or Hebrew, but we don't have to be. And we know how to communicate in English so that souls are walked by the word of God and want to follow you. And that's what's happened in this case. And now, Father, we are ready to lay hands on him. We pray that a double portion of the spirit that you gave to Elisha will light upon him's way. Not only as he goes in and comes out uh, with the talents, but may he realize that the spirit of God has anointed him for such a time as this. The last moments of this earth's history. There's nothing better, no greater job description. Being a medical doctor means nothing. Being a businessman means nothing. But giving the three angels messages for this day and time is everything. Help them to be focused. Help them to be able to give it with power and with clarity. May men and women be brought before the cross of Christ and realize uh, that they have an intercessor in the courts of heaven. And his name is Jesus. Now, Father, we pray for him. We pray for his wife and family as well that you will keep them with your keeping power. Father, make this a home where truly the angels of heaven will just love to set up their domain. And when grace shall be waiting for it, and he be found like he is this day, bow before you, humble before you, a man of God before you, with the power from you, so that he can raise his hands and say, this is our God, waited for you. Now with the trophies, we're ready to meet you in the kingdom. What we fail to ask, please don't fail to grant according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm living as a final generation that actually saw the last of the old and the beginning of the new. You see, my years in college, all the men who built this work retired after teaching us. I am the only living black evangelist and possible Christian Seventh-day Adventist who ever met J.H. Lawrence. Some of you have never heard of him. I went and I preached his last sermon that he ever heard live alive. J.H. Lawrence was a great evangelist. He was 104 years old and I said, where does he live? When I was a freshman. 1984, I went to his house and he was sitting in a wheelchair with his eyes open. And I asked his wife, can I please see him? She said, yes, but he won't respond. He just sits and he blinks. And I said, well, can I see him? She said, yes. And I went in and I said, Elder Lawrence. And he was just sitting. And the Holy Spirit said, preach the word. 
I was a freshman. I had never written a sermon. Don't know how to write a sermon. And I took my little pocket Bible. I still have that Bible. As a matter of fact, I'll give it to you. I'll finally give it to you. It's a little pocket Bible. It's brown. Yeah, I'm going to give it to you. It's a little brown with a little zipper. I can't see those words anymore. <laughs> I opened that little Bible and I just opened it. And I'll never forget. This is your hour and the power of darkness is upon you. And I told him that this is Satan's hour. And I talked about the coming of the Lord. And I start preaching to him like a thousand people were in that room. And all of a sudden he said, uh, uh. And as I preach, uh, uh, uh. Start trying to jump out that wheelchair. J.H. Lawrence. Elder C.E. Mosley. Elder C.T. Richards. Elder E.E. E. Cleveland. Elder E.C. Ward. Elder George Rainey. Vanderman. All, Joe Cruz. Personally knew all of them. They're all dead. They're dead. You can't meet them. And what they're teaching is not being taught or preached by the masses and not being taught at all in our colleges. Our prophet said this would happen. She said that Israel of old would look just like the new Israel. We look just like it. And I want you to know I'm excited. Every day I ask God, come on. Come on, Lord. Come on. I wouldn't have a problem at all if God laid me down. It's just sleep. I wouldn't have one problem at all. I am ready for the Lord to come. I am sick of this world. I'm sick of seeing people beaten up and battered by the devil. I'm sick of seeing people wondering, can I make it when God has already made it for you? And all you have to do is continue to lean on him. All you have to do is continue to lean on him. When God says lean not under your own understanding, it's because you can never understand how you can make it. They say the biggest surprise when we get to heaven is that you're going to see so many people there that you didn't think would be there. And they said the next surprise, you could, there are a whole lot of people that won't be there that you thought would be there. And the biggest surprise is that you are there. Fathers, praying with your sons, teaching them that I'm not God. I'm not the real provider in this home. There's a God in heaven and should daddy die tonight, you'd be all right because he has died and resurrected and committed his life to this household as long as you choose him. Oh, yes. We will see our lives just as they are. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. That's the promise. We can stand on that to receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. God said, I want you to be where I am. But do you want to be there? Do you want? to come home.